I can start with a quick update. Nothing too exciting. I'm uh, still working on my multi-label classification. I've been too busy even at work with everything else to even focus on it much, but uh, I just started back up and sort of set up an environment to work with simple transformers. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, see where I can get with uh, multi-label classification using simple transformers. Um, one fun little thing uh, is that um, I always had this tension between my local uh, Jupyter and Git Python environment and Colab. And I think I've kind of resolved that. So in this case, you know, there's a large amount of data, but I was able to get that into Google, uh, into Google Drive, so that was fine. But I need to use Colab for a GPU. But I have this whole project Git thing where I track each project and I have branches for my different experiments. And so I didn't realize it, but you can actually open up a, uh, a notebook from a private Git repo. Hmm. And uh, and work on it, and then save it back to the private Git repo. So uh, that sort of unified all of that. Now my uh, this branch of this repo for my multi-label classification experimentation. This is the simple transformers branch, and I can do every I can actually use it and run my experiments in Colab. So so it seems like a small thing, but I was kind of excited about that. Um, yeah, outside of that, um, I did want to ask what you guys think about the uh, uh, the new uh, meetup, the new start uh, thing on the uh, pipelines, ML pipelines that's starting uh, that started this past Wednesday, which I didn't find out about till today, but I was just looking into it. You guys, any anyone familiar with that, or, or were you anyone on that call Wednesday? Yeah, I want uh, to join. Yeah, but I haven't. Sorry, you're you going. Uh, yeah, I joined. Uh, I actually read before. Um, um, I'm. I will try to follow. Uh, uh, but um, it's a little bit. I don't know. Wednesday night. It's a little bit late on the East Coast. Um, I don't know. Usually, I didn't enjoy Wednesday classes like last time, just because it was. Um, uh, uh, yeah, a little yep. bit too hard. But it should be should be interesting. And they also, oh, one thing is they they mentioned is that they, even though the class is on uh, uh, TensorFlow serving, um, they, oh, like an extension of which one is I, I keep forgetting. But um, um, uh, they actually gonna after like first five classes, uh, first five chapters, they're gonna do. Um, uh, uh, SQL and pipeline. So, so you have an alternative. Uh, you'll see it in the alternative. So. What's the alternative they're going to do to TFX? Uh, they, uh, no, they, uh, S, the TFX is the main one, but uh, they're going to do SK Learn as an alternative. Oh, SK basically. Learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So SK Learn is what you said. Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, um, TFX, TFX, is it limited to only TensorFlow? I know it came out of TensorFlow work, but is it purely a TensorFlow uh, pipeline library? I think it is. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it still will be worth illustrating, you know, whether or not you use TensorFlow or not, it still will be worth illustrating and seeing. Well, you know, it's going to be these groundbreaking new pipeline products tend to demonstrate generically, you know, what's needed and used. Yes, yes. Stuff, so. Yeah, one of the cool things in TensorFlow serving is that you know you can version your uh, model, and you can switch over. So when a, when a new version is dumped, you just change the name, right? So the old model and the new model coexist, and then it oh, you know it just switches over automatically, or you can oh, uh, you know. So that's a hot swap, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Interesting. That's very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we all have some interest in it. Um, I don't know if I'll get the book or not, but we'll see. Um, I actually was more interested in another class. I don't know if you saw, um, uh, Srinivas uh, wanted to do uh, unsupervised deep learning class. Um, Ooh. He posted uh, 
Vietnam in general. Um, I know that many people, I think maybe like 12 or 14 people are interested. Um, I signed up, but I'm like a little bit reluctant because, I don't know, it's just it's a lot of classes, but, but it's, um, it's based on uh, Berkeley class uh, from Peter Abiel and uh, others from last year. Uh, so it's a pure unsupervised course, like generative and uh, um, I, uh, I forgot what the other one is. Uh, so. Do you know? Do you know if it'll cover? Uh, I mean NLP. I'm sure it'll cover generative models, right? Which are yeah. they're not unsupervised, but they're self-supervised, right? They call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah did you have? Will, will it include any other form of NLP? Because that's the piece of NLP I really have very little. <laughs> practical uh, context for uh, I, using. I started, I started listening to the first lecture just to see what's in the class. Uh, but yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah, where was that Where was that posted? I seem to be like uh, missing. General. On... General. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I was surprised oh. because uh, I don't think any of us mentioned it anywhere. Uh, so do you have a link to the Berkeley course? Or is it yeah. in oh, yeah, a, if you just, yeah, if you just like, scroll up in general, uh, that's like a Google site. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I posted it. So, yeah. you, you posted the Slack uh, yeah. comment. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, okay. Right. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm like, it's driving week for me, uh, so I apologize for the sound. Yeah. No, you, you're not too bad for be driving in the car. That's pretty good. Uh, hey, Gotham, what's going on? Is there anything you want to uh, talk about? I think I brought up everything I got. Hey, uh, not much. Actually, uh, like I have been recovering after surgery for the past month, so I've not been doing anything much. Sorry about that. Hope everything's okay. Yeah, it's just a shoulder surgery, nothing much. Oh, and uh, yeah, years ago I had my my uh, labrum, I guess, like all of the cartilage detached. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine is and, pretty similar, I think. My labrum got torn, I think. Yeah. What were you me. doing? Uh, so I was, so it happened initially in 2012. I was playing cricket. It's an Indian game. I don't know if you're familiar with it. So I, uh, my. Uh, well, it, it, does it use a paddle or something or what? what is it? Yeah, it's like baseball. So okay. it's, yeah, it's similar to that. So my hand got dislocated while I was playing. And then, yeah, it got progressively worse and worse. And I finally decided to do the surgery now since I had a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm recovering now. How, how's, uh, uh, yeah, it takes a while. Then. Yeah, and you yeah. probably got to go to uh, to uh, physical therapy pretty quickly, I'd expect. Yep, yep. I've so been, yeah. uh, how's... Uh, how are you? You want to give us an update on work? Um, yeah, I've I've even taken leave from work for like two weeks now. Uh, I've just started working again. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I can just talk about what I've been doing at work. So, uh, I had mentioned about asynchronous scraping. I think like a couple of months ago. So and and that PDF problem which I had talked about last time. So now I'm using uh, this thing called Puppeteer. It's uh, so it's basically uh, a, a headless Chromium instance. So which you can use to scrape uh, websites. So what it does is uh, it opens up Chrome in the background as a, yeah, it's something that you cannot see. And then it loads all the websites there. And then you can use that to scrape content. And then it has a PDF saving option as well. So just as you would print a PDF from Chrome by just clicking save as PDF, you can do that from uh, Puppeteer. So, and you can do all of this asynchronously. So yeah, this is what I'm using now to scrape websites faster. Uh, at work. And how does that relate to the ones you, you typically hear about, like Selenium? Uh, I've not compared this uh, with Selenium, but it serves the same purpose. You can open websites remote, I mean, and do operations 
the same that you would do when you open a browser yeah yeah i uh, and, yeah and so are you most i'm sorry are you mostly going after pdfs then yeah the uh, like i said last time so the pdf is to save evidence of uh right. Oh, content. you save as PDF. I'm sorry. I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Save as PDF, yeah. Uh, I've been doing some PDF stuff, not exactly that, but uh, for our crawling of our vend software vendor sites, you know, we have each URL. We go get the content. We use Boilerpipe to extract the – Boilerpipe 3 to extract the text. So I get the title and text, you know, try to turn it into an Oracle kind of format. And uh, – that doesn't work when the URL ends in .pdf <laughs> at all. Um, so I started playing with um, how to get the title and the text in an article-like format, and I came across, maybe you've heard of it, uh, let me look at what my summary says here. Uh, what I found, I'm spending some time on this day before yesterday, is that uh, uh, Okay, yeah, PDF minor dot six. Okay, have you ever heard of that? Yep. Yeah, so it's based, PDF minor is kind of older, and it used to be Python 2 and then with 3, but PDF minor dot six is interesting because they have, it's not exactly like boilerplate, but they do have a process that improves the, um, they call it layout analysis. So they have a layout analysis technology. I, I didn't read it in too much detail. But somehow, it definitely produces better formed text from PDF. So, like, when I was using other PDF text extractors, I would get, like, spaces, like, for the word with, I would get, like, W-I space T-H, like, all over the place, and just not great formatting. And then when I used uh, PDF Miner, evidently their layout analysis, which is built in, just um, solved that problem. And so I think it's better at word sentences and paragraphs. So I found that part of the puzzle, the PDF minor six, M-I-N-E-R. Um, and then to get the title, uh, there's this thing called PY PDF two. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but it gives you the metadata for the um, PDF and the title. Now I haven't tested how reliable that is, you know, like how many, PDFs actually have metadata. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's my uh, tentative exploratory solution to the problem work we have. So, anyway. Um, I actually, uh, I listened to a couple of Snorkel uh, presentations recently, and it looks like uh, parsing PDF is like the main, one of the main successful use cases, because that's what they, that's where you can like build like simple rules. Uh, so when they were like showing off like why Snorkel works well, like they, that's a really good example for them. So they now have a use case where you're doing, right, so rather than information extraction, you, you're really talking about like text, like like training it for text extract, like uh, Yeah, chunks. so like uh, bounding boxes and, and, uh, and, and like learning that. So it looks like they have... Uh, Basically, like working, like at least like some I, I, uh, some uh, framework to work with documents, not just text itself. So it's like a document extraction move. Yeah, <laughs> That's interesting. Because document extraction is a big deal. Like Microsoft, I heard some podcasts yeah. on how they have some really amazing tools for doing uh, enabling enterprises to do all kinds of extraction of text from documents. Form extractor, I think, is what it's called. Maybe I think we've talked about it before briefly. Um, let me just post real quick. Uh, here's the one that does the metadata. And let's see what we have here. Where's the other one? PDF minor six. Here's the one with, that does that. And here is their comp comp composable. That's what they call it. I don't understand that. But this is their the sort of logic for that gives that does a sort of cleaner extraction. So, yeah, it's 
called Composable API. Oh, it's showing the params, but this is not the, uh, let me get a better um, URL for it. They actually have like a description of it. And that is, I think I have too many collabs open right now. I think that's here. Uh, so look at that URL real quick. It's kind of interesting that I just posted. Yeah. So layout analysis algorithm. Oh, okay. Does it look familiar to you, Suji, sort of? No, no, no. No, this is totally new to me. This is very nice. Yeah, but that's why I would think it's kind of analogous to boilerpipe in that it's like extracting text in a better way, you know, using, although it uses sort of shallow parsing boilerpipe and some types of machine learning. I thought this was kind of interesting. But anyway. Uh, Gotham. So you got Puppeteer. It's promising. Yep. And to get things, get these the pages you're monitoring for malicious stuff or whatever it is. I forget. I don't, that's probably the wrong word for it, but for guns and drugs and bad things. <laughs> and uh, so the, you got puppets here doing that. What else is going on with all that? It was a, it's a pretty big project you got going there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a pretty big thing. Uh, and and I think you also part. had some changes happening in your org, right? Some you know, with the data science organization itself as well, or something. Uh, maybe it was someone else. I don't. I don't. Know. Oh no! I thought maybe they were just hiring some more people or something. That was sort of the. Oh. But, but go ahead. What else with the project? Um. Yeah. So Puppeteer basically allows you to even uh, manipulate the HTML, so you can. Uh, add things to the HTML before you're saving it as a PDF. So what this allows me to do is, uh, suppose I have a sentence in the middle of the page where I found the particular keyword, right? The offending keyword. What I can do is I can just find out which HTML element that belongs to. And uh, so the problem that I had previously was when I save it as a PDF, I actually lose that uh, location of that sentence, right? I'll have to again open that PDF and then use something like PDF minor to search for that text. So this was highly inefficient. So now what I can do is with Puppeteer, I can uh, find out which HTML element that belongs to. And then at the end of the page, I just add a new hyperlink and internal link, which if I click takes me to that uh, offending sentence, that particular sentence of interest. And now when I save it, uh, the new PDF will have that particular link intact. So if I click that, it takes me to that uh, offending sentence. And if I even if I want to extract the coordinates of that sentence of interest, uh, this is served, saved in the PDF metadata. So it all the links are saved as I mean, all the links are there in the metadata and I can just extract the destination to get the coordinates. So yeah, it's also a big problem for me and it, yeah, it's, it helps a lot. Yeah. Very nice. I don't know if any of that made sense, but. Well, it yeah. makes perfect sense except more or less, but uh, what about the, uh, the legal unaltered yeah, PDF. but all I'm doing is I'm just appending something to the end of the HTML. I'm not uh, modifying the HTML in any way at all. I get it. I get it. So you don't have at to. End, yeah. Yeah. I'm not modifying the actual page. At the end of the page, I'm just adding an HTML link. All of this is actually yeah. done using JavaScript. So you can't use Python or anything. Uh, you'll have to write JavaScript stuff to modify the, it's called DOM, document object model, the HTML thing. Yeah, so you're just adding uh, hyperlinks at the end of the page. And then these are easily extractable when you are, I mean, in the PDF, those links are intact and then you can also extract the location of the destination of that link. So I don't have to search uh, through the whole PDF again. Yeah. Yep. Here's a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's like creating a table of contents to the... 
pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, Puppeteer, you feed it URLs, right? So you have the URLs. You want, you're not crawling with it or spidering at all, right? It's not a spider. No, it's, uh, no, it's not. And I'm using something called Puppeteer. So that's an unofficial port of Puppeteer in Python. So Puppeteer is a Node.js application. It's, uh, yeah, it's a JavaScript oh. thing. So Puppeteer, you can use Python. But to do the DOM manipulation, you will have to write your JavaScript because yeah, JavaScript is the only thing that works in the browser. So okay. for that you have to write JavaScript, but you can <laughs> still use a lot of Python. Yeah. Did you write the JavaScript? Yeah, I had to struggle a lot to learn <laughs> that thing. Yeah. Something I've been avoiding, although I, I do, I, I must have been 12 years ago, so I remember learning Java, a little bit of JavaScript, took a small class in it, but yeah. The DOM makes sense. It's a nice structure. That's cool. Uh, so is this, you've proven it, and it needs to go into production now? And also, what are the other pieces that are missing from the whole uh, so, process? Yeah, I've just done this on a small scale. Now I have to uh, integrate into the into the main application. And yeah, so this is just a small, like a small cog in the wheel. So. Now the whole thing goes into a, so this evidence is just one small part of, this PDF is just one small part of it. Then we have the entire uh, record itself. So which company was it? Which URL did I scrape? What is the particular sentence? All of these things are stored in a, uh, in a, what is it called? NoSQL database. And then mm -hmm. we serve the whole thing on a UI. So in the UI, the user, the annotator will get to see the PDF uh, and it will have bounding boxes also. I forgot to mention that. So there will be borders around the sentence and yeah, he can just say accept, reject on each of these bounding boxes. So yeah, this is how I create training data. And right. So, so really kind of you have, you have like your metadata info, not for the PDF, but in general. Yeah in your Mongo or whatever the, your NoSQL database is. Yep. And that probably has a link to the PDF as well. Yep. There's just a ID for each PDF. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it is really is the PDF database or not the, not the blob part of it or but whatever the PDF. Um, it's a page. You're basically monitoring company pages. Yes. So, yeah. okay. Yep. Nice. And then for the GUI front end. So we have a UI team. So, we just tell them what we want and they make it for us. So you, have, so you haven't shown them uh, uh, Suji, my favorite tool these days, Streamlit? Uh, no, they, they are front don't, end don't think, Yeah, don't, don't show it to them. They'll think they're out of a job. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, I know, but front end expertise is not needed. And this is just... But anyway, there might be some very specific intricacies for this. So this is it's really yeah. They're using Streamlit's the less of an Streamlit's yeah. less of an interactive kind of. It's more of a data display and playing around with data. It's a little bit less of an interactive kind of environment, so it may not be good for that. But okay, great. Thank you for the update. Glad I'm I'm glad to hear you, uh, your voice. I'm glad you're on, and glad to get an update on your project. It's a you know, it's a really interesting project. Uh, I have a question. So let's say somebody just does general web scraping uh, and then extracting some information and they don't need to like save it for like, I don't know, for traceability, but they, let's say you want to like build machine learning model on top of that. Um, it seems like saving it as PDF would be like a really good way of adding traceability just for your, just for your like, Data machine learning application, right? If something goes wrong, you knew exactly what you operated on. So that would be like it, like you know, almost like a step in, uh, uh, you know, like saving intermediate data. So wouldn't you uh, want to say would wouldn't you want to just save the HTML? Uh, oh, that, I, that's the thing. Like I don't know that. Part of software at all? Uh, is it easy enough 
not the same as you page locally? Well, no, my, my point is in Gotham, maybe this is wrong, because maybe you can't really get it. But if you can really get all of the uh, source code on the page, right, and save that, then you could do, you know, you could PDF it, you could extract the text, you can do other things with it. You know what I mean? It's it's a uh, it's the full source of truth. Is that you think that makes sense, Gotham? Yeah. So PDF, we chose PDF because it's more convenient for the annotators, so they can just see. Uh, yeah, they can just see the web page as it was. But if you just want the content, PDF is not a not maybe not the best way. You can just save all the text as a list or something like that. But the problem of saving with HT as the HTML source code is. Uh, you will lose the styling you will lose any yeah you will lose, basically you lose the css and all of that stuff so so question you, question though if 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 you yeah. use a headless like puppeteer right yeah. it's the rendered html right so there's different two different things there's the source right mm -hmm. which is what i see if i go to the page and view the source right <laughs> but there's the rendered html or rendered code which a headless browser would get Right, but and that still, has everything, right? One would have the CSS, but uh, that's what I'm doing when I save it as a PDF. The rendered thing, I save it directly as a PDF, so I get all the styling. But so, if you just save the HTML, I still don't think. Uh, I think you there is a rendered HTML, isn't there that you can grab? I mean, we're splitting hairs a little bit here. So would um, that here, have all the <laughs> CSS and? That, I think, is the question, and I think the answer I might be yes. Uh, it's at least closer, right? Because if there's any dynamically generated um, text, right, or or anything, right, you will get that using a, uh, using a, a selenium, for example, right? Like if the title or the if some text is dynamically generated by some JavaScript, you, 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 you will get the results of that. Okay, I'm not so I guess Yuri, the question becomes why? Uh, what's the function? Uh, I understand it's a data snapshot, but let's just say, what would you do with it afterwards? Um, no, I'm just thinking of a use case. So we, um, I know we we pull some data from a HTML, but most of the time we actually like either like get data as as PDF, so get data as. Uh, like some nicer format, uh, but going forward, we might want to pull the data and then, like you know, try to like extract information from text. But uh, I never, like, I, I haven't thought about like this how like the system would be built. But I'm just thinking, you know, uh, it would be so. Typically, what we do is we pull the data, like any other data, like it doesn't have to be text. We pull the data, we save it as close to the source as possible. And then we run different transformation because you know you want to be able to trace back to like you know if something went wrong at the source like then you know what, that's what happened. Um, so I'm thinking like what, in what form uh, the web page can be saved. Yeah, I mean it's almost a reproducibility. Yeah. So I think that depends on on what what form you're parsing it. You know what I mean? Like saying you don't know that yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like for, for, for me, for Boilerpipe, which is kind of like article extraction, right? Turning a page into an article, title and body. For that, basically, I just, you actually, the first step in Boilerpipe is just to save the HTML as it is. And then Boilerpipe extracts from it. So, and I actually have two needs for extraction. One is this sort of, um, MD5 diff, so I could tell whether it's a new page or not, or it's the exact same page as another one. And then there's the cl automatic classification, which uses a different boilerpipe extractor. Same library, but it, it's the article extractor rather than the extract everything. So for me, because that's what I'm doing with the HTML pages, my extraction process is actually having the HTML that's that's downloaded right prior to any extraction that gives me exactly what you're talking about, right? It gives me reproducibility because that's what I'm acting on. Okay. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it depends on what your parsing processes are going to be. 
And once you know what those are, you'll know what they're acting on, and then you can just save that. I mean, that may or may not be true. I'm just saying theoretically. <laughs> it's a way to think about it. All right, thanks. And saving it in a NoSQL database like Gotham's company is doing is not a bad idea for that kind of web stuff. Not the only way to go. Uh, Gotham, anything else? Um, no, not much. I have some uh, personal news that I could share. So, so there was a scholarship that I applied to. It's a... Uh, it's called Erasmus Mundus. Uh, so they have this uh, NLP program. It's called Language and Communication Technologies. It's a master's program. So, yeah, so I was selected in that. Uh, so I might quit my job and go for that. It's, uh, yeah, so they give funding to study and stay in Europe for two years. Uh, they have like six universities and uh, and they give you option. I mean, they allot two universities to you, and they give you a small amount to uh, study and stay there for two years. What was the name of the scholarship again? Erasmus Mundus or Mundus. I'm not sure. E R A S M U S. As in the philosopher, I guess. Whatever. So that yeah, that's um. So that's, yeah, yeah, is that right? <laughs> Erasmus. I don't know much about him, but I know the name. The um, so first of all, that's that's great. You have that option. That's congratulations. I'm wondering what your two things uh, where you think you might end up if you accept it in Europe, and also yeah, they have already given me the places. So it's uh, Prague, Charles University in Prague, and and University of Trento in Italy. What are you leaning towards? No, these are the two universities. So first university I'll be doing in Prague and second in Trento. Oh, you do one and then the other. Yeah, yeah. And oh, you know who's in, uh, Edgar's in Prague. I just, uh, when I was doing this PDF mm -hmm. stuff, I um, actually just, is it Prague? No, I'm sorry, he's in Barcelona. Sorry, sorry. He used okay. to be in Prague, I think, and then he moved. Sorry about that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, this thing by has the way, a... Edgar is t took a data. Um, uh, he's more of a, a a data engineer job. He took a full time data engineer job with one of the major. Um, fuck, I forget the name of it. All of a sudden, one of the major uh, um, code. You know, data those camps, code camp, data camps. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, let me just look it up real quick if you're interested. Sorry, Gotham, I got more questions for you, but <laughs> let me look it up. I'll look it up real quick here. He just told me the other day. Yeah, he's um, yeah Springboard. He's working for Springboard.com, and they do this sort of mentor system for classes, and place you and uh, full time is an analytics engineering is what he called it anyway just a little update there the uh, Gotham so what do you hope to like is is the course of study really very specific and you don't have much choice or is there a certain area you hope to really go into um, so yeah the course is a mix of CS stuff, a uh, lot of linguistics, and I mean, like computational linguistics stuff, and yeah, some machine learning thrown in there as well. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I have been, my work is mostly normal machine learning and a lot of software engineering. So, I want to really focus in on NLP and yeah, get a good NLP engineer position. That's what I'm aiming for. And yeah, maybe publish some papers <laughs> while I'm there in the top journals. Because I see a lot of even undergraduates and all having good papers published. So yeah, that's one of my targets. Is well. Very well known school for NLP. Okay. 
That's nice. What did you say, Sujit? I didn't hear that. Um, Trenta is a very well-known school for NLP. So the other schools in the mix were uh, Saarland University in Germany and mm-hmm. uh, Groningen, I think. That's how it's pronounced. Groningen is Netherlands. also a great one. Okay. Then, uh, then one in Spain, which is not that good. And there's Lorraine as well in France. Yeah, yeah these were the main ones. Yeah, Charles, so I'm not so sure. I haven't heard of it. Well, I have heard of it, but not in the context of NLP. So, yeah. But otherwise, it's also quite well known. Sorry. Yeah. Are, you, yeah. are you gunning for Fang? <laughs> you know what Fang is? Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy with that, but... Uh, yeah, a nice, well-paying job would be. Yeah. And yeah, so you would I hope guess. to co- you would hope to come out of the program with at least one published paper or yeah, a couple and you know, something prestigious, and then and then go a, a, possibly apply at some of the big guys or close to it, and see what happens. That would be your sort of that's yeah, sort of your plan. There are a lot of uh, NLP companies in Europe as well, right? Yes. Like you have Spacey, yeah. Rasa, Hug, even Hugging Face is, I think, Paris, right? There are a lot of companies that I could right. deep set. Yeah. And where's also, your family? Google, uh, Google has a uh, office in uh, Prague. So okay. while you are there, might was you know try doing the feelers thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. What is that feelers? Feelers. I mean, you know, just find okay. people, you know, network okay. whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, COVID is another thing. I don't know if they'll start off online or not. So that will be a big bummer if they started online. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be this fall or is it sooner? It starts in September. Yeah. So okay. yeah, if if it's you all good. Some luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's have time. you been? Have you, you been vaccinated? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Soon, not yet. My parents are vaccinated. I'm not vaccinated yet. Where does your family live? Your parents? India. I'm 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 living with my parents now. I was working in Mumbai, but I'm with my parents right now, so because of the COVID. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is really cool. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I I think you should you know really take it yeah, totally. Yeah. Yep. And since it's free, that's what make. I mean, even yeah, c- convincing me more to go. Uh-huh. And Europe is really well connected by train, so you know while there you can go around and see the rest of it too. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been there. Yeah. So. Wow, yeah, my, this my is cute. this is like huge, amazing, huge, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, my colleague did a PhD in Trento, so uh, if you need any connections, so he can help you in any way I can connect you. He did like a search, uh, uh, knowledge graph type of things. Okay, interesting. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Yeah. I, I bet if you travel around too, you could uh, <laughs> visit Edgar. Uh, I, I'm just I'm speaking for him, but you might not the terrible thing to reach out to him because he's totally part of the community there, machine learning community as well. And then, and then of course there's Ray in Berlin, you know, Ray Farr. And he sounds like he's got an interesting group of friends too, actually. So, but anyway, I'm sure there's others, but if you need any help to reach out to them, let me know. So. Sure. Well, well, who could top that news? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else, Gotham? Nope, that's that's all. Cool. Excellent. Uh, CG, do you have anything you want to uh, bring up? Um, well, I went to uh, the John Snow Labs uh, NLP summit yesterday, yesterday and day before. And uh, they had, so, you know, I initially thought it would be like a pitch for John Snow Labs because, you know, they, they have a good product. It's a Spark-based NLP pipeline, um, similar to uh, Spacey in look and feel, but it works on Spark, right? So they have, uh, you know, different languages and, you know, different uh, models, pre-trained models for different uh, 
phases or uh, tasks in different languages. I think they support around 200 languages now. And, um, you know, so they can do post tagging, dependency parsing, you name it, that, that sort of thing. Um, they have they have a very heavy focus on biomed. And uh, so um, they have a bunch of models for entity extraction and uh, relation extraction and so forth. So it's like, you know, it's a, if a person or if a group wanted to uh, do some work on biomedical NLP, uh, they would have, you know, these guys can provide a lot of tools. So I had initially thought that uh, it would be all about Jon Snow and, um, you know, but it wasn't. Although lately they have been, you know, and they did mention in the keynotes and some other uh, talks you know, how cool they were and, you know, how they're breaking uh, benchmarks everywhere and so forth. But the, you know, the Jon Snow talks were actually a minority. There were, you know, I think four or five of them at most over two days. Um, and a lot of them were user stories from customers. And, uh, but there were also stuff like Stanza. So Stanza is an NLP pipeline uh, from Stanford. Uh, it is not the same as core NLP. Uh, it's a different thing. And uh, what they're doing is they're more uh, neural based and uh, they want to get rid of all the rule based stuff that core NLP has. So core NLP has a whole bunch of, you know, like baked in rules that, you know, if, if a word is in front of another word or a word type is in front of another word type, then something must happen and so forth. So those don't actually translate very well across languages. So these guys, um, built the, the the second thing they did was they they are predominantly character based models so tokenization doesn't really affect them differences in tokenization like cjk is one type um, but even uh, for say german right um, tokenization is different from the romance languages so um, but so the idea is that most of the all, all i think all of them uh, their models are character based and they have so far been uh, able to be comparable with core nlp and they have beaten uh, Spacey in a lot of uh, you know, benchmarks. And they have a Python uh, interface. So that's and so that was uh, one interesting one. There was another one where um, I think this is some Venus something or other. Um, so this lady was talking about um, uh, teaching BERT, right? Um, why BERT uh, off the shelf uh, is not good enough for biomed. And why, um, and so biomedical, um, the, the community has a whole bunch of ontologies for various things. And, uh, you know, she outlined like four different ways of, you know, pre-training BERT uh, using these ontologies. So I thought that was uh, quite interesting. Uh, and so she mentioned, I think, UMLS BERT, where um, they modify the input. So, you know, how, um, the input to a BERT system is the token, the segment ID, and uh, the positional encoding, right? So they're adding one more, which is a semantic type of the span under um, the token for the semantic type. So, and then uh, they have another one where they predict not only the must word, but any of its synonyms as well. So things like that. I mean, there, there's a certain, you know, they have done some tweaks which make the BERT model more cognizant of the ontology right, uh, that it uh, works under. So that was one I like. There were others, I mean, you know, various. Do you, do you, do you remember the presenter's name or do you have like a reference? I can find out. Uh, actually, hang on a second. I can, I can probably get you that right away. Yeah, I saw, um, I saw uh, John Snow, uh, the conference, but uh, I didn't have time. Hmm. Um, I, I listened to them lot last year, and they I think they were, it was like a similar format, and yeah. Uh, but. There's no doubt as well that if you're using Spark, you know, if that's part of your production world, that uh, you know, using Jon Snow's uh, library is a great idea, mm -hmm. right? You know, and, and also I could see totally how they're more generally NLP, you know, they, they just the spirit of them. I could see them being interested in general in NLP like this. So I didn't expect it but in this summit, but that's great. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I, I posted it. So, you know, yeah. Okay. 
Rachel. So it's interesting because there really is definitely a a theme going on in the world about bringing knowledge of the world into this purely statistical models, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good example of that. I don't know, you know, I don't know anything about that. But gosh, if I was in if I was in in Gotham's position, that would be an area I might pursue, right? It's it's a great combination. Seems like it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a historic confluence or historic bringing back together of different uh, AI worlds. So anyway, big talk. But. Yes. Yeah, that's what I had. I've been mostly doing uh, non-consequential stuff otherwise. Yeah. All righty. And uh, Yuri, is there anything uh, else you would like to bring up? Um, no, not much. Um, so I posted the, um, the talk from OGSC, um, uh, on another, like, vector, vector search system. Um, I don't think talk was very good. It was just very, like, they were giving a lot of technical details and it was interesting to me, but I don't think they structured it. But, like, they were, like, they were, like, not selling. I don't think they were selling their product really well. But I definitely want to kind of look, uh, their system is open source, it seems. Um, so, uh, I, uh, yeah, the company's name is in the presentation, but the system is called something else. Um, so that, that was one presentation I saw. Um, and yeah, as I said, I, said, I look, I listened to uh, several, uh, uh, some of have like two snorkel presentations. Uh, I think snorkel. Um, I didn't realize they actually they they don't they don't sell it yet. The pre pre customer, so you have to like individually ask for it. Um, uh, but they like I think they're doing like a major push into government space, uh, and that's why they were in a bunch of uh, uh, DC area meetups. And I think that's uh, that's why I saw it twice. Um, um, but, um, um, uh, they actually, they, they're not working. Like I was, the, the, one of the problems where I'm, I'm interested in self-supervision, um, and like, uh, you know, lower amount of labels uh, is, um, um, is a segmentation problem and they don't work. They don't have segmentation on, like they don't have segmentation solution yet. Um, so. So, my, so, my uh, systems for that. so CG, do you have any ideas of segmentation, uh, self-supervised or active learning or anything like that for small sets with segmentation problem? I can I can give more details. Uh, so yeah. so we work so with agriculture with agriculture we work a lot with satellite data, um, and like you know with satellite like in theory you can look at different bands and and basically distinguished vegetation, uh, so you can say, like, what's growing where. Uh, typically, like, we don't have a lot of label data because uh, um, we have them, like, next year. Uh, we don't have them in real time. And also in, like, few countries that actually, like, produce data at the national level. I think you broke up. Or did I? No, no, no. I think we lost you. You're, we lost you, man. We can't hear you. But we got the satellite segment. I'm sorry. Yeah, you want, to, uh, yeah, you, want uh, you may have like a uh, little bit of labeled data, like patchwork, and you want to ex kind of uh, spread those labels to the rest of the to the rest of the country, sort of. Yeah, so I, it's I, an image seg it's, it's an image segmentation problem with yeah. us. Small amount of but, it's also, bootstrap. but it's also very specific because it's uh, it's not looking for cats and dogs. It's look, looking at this blurry, multi uh, multi band uh, satellite images. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there is anything. I mean, but uh, I asked. I talked to I talked to a few companies that sort of uh, for us it's like a side sort of like a side project. Mm -hmm. uh, but I talked to a few companies that they actually specialize in that, and that don't. Uh, there is not one specific like you know active 
funding or like this uh, super, uh, you know, self-supervised a system that they use. Right. Uh, yeah. I think hey, the, I mean, if, but you're going to have to pay to get labeled then, probably. And you know, there's there's uh, quite a few companies out there now that that specialize in image labeling like this. Some of them do it pretty fairly cheaply, but. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I haven't thought about it. I don't think we can. Um, I, um, I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's easy to to label data manually. Uh, well, I mean, there's a whole industry for image labeling. <laughs> you know, I've dealt. I've I've dealt closely with one of the companies that try to do that came out of that world and is doing tech stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the way most people have to do it. <laughs> the, the, the one I talked with, they actually do distributed. It's, they have a whole system set up for very for a high amount of efficiency and using people over the world and quality checking, and they give you an interface and you create instructions, all that kind of stuff, so. I think we might have lost you, Yuri. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll bring up one thing. Oh, as we see on the video now, Yuri, you're live on your phone. <laughs> Can't hear you, though. But the uh, uh, I just want to bring up one thing. I posted it. No one seemed quite as excited as me, but actually I used Spacey 3.0 to do organization or company or the org extraction, you know, use the RNER. And when I switched in, in, in Spacey 3, they have a, um, a Transformers model you can use. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I switched to that model, it actually fucking worked. You know, normally, naively, Spacey doesn't do shit for entity extraction. I mean, it's so disappointing and so annoying. Uh, over the last couple of years, you, you, you know, you can't just like take it and extract organizations and have it actually work. I mean, it just gets all sorts of crap. Mm -hmm. But that Transformers model did a pretty damn good job. So I'm quite happy with that. In the world of the NER, people talk about like it's some super simple thing, and then when you do it, it's crap. And uh, mm -hmm. now we're over the hump, you know, that naive hump at least to some degree. Yeah. So I was quite happy with it, very happy. You know all about that, CG, right? Yeah. <laughs> or at least you know, all the different tools that are out there. So, uh, All right. Well, it looks like we kind of lost Yuri. Uh, we picked this up next week. Uh, is there anyone who wants to talk about anything else or bring up any other points? All right. I'll uh, copy the uh, discussion, put it in Slack, and and the call. So thank you guys. Talk cool. to you all, all right. next week. Good week. All right. Yep. Yep. Bye. Thank right. you. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.